a few days later. And this is about a 30 minute conversation on speakerphone sitting out over the Hollywood Hills in the classic Hollywood setting with the big pool and the butler bringing, you know, iced tea. Just, you know, Matrix like bizarreness. And I'm sitting up there, and the Matrix like weirdness is that Buzz Aldrin's on the phone, speakerphone, on an iPhone. It was like an iPhone 1. And he's conversing with this Hollywood star. And, and I, I chime in a few times. And he's saying all this wild stuff off record. And then he says, by the way, the Indians in a few months are going to crash a probe into the moon and they're going to discover water. Of course, we really discovered it there, but weren't supposed to release that info. But just be waiting for that. Folks, it wasn't in the news yet they were going to crash a probe in. And I'm thinking Buzz Aldrin's nuts at this point. This is how naive I was even then. Okay, they, about a month later or so, they announced they're going to crash a probe in. And then a couple months later, I'm walking through an airport, and there's USA Today with the cover. Indians discover water by crashing the probe in, and then it sent up the ice crystals. Another probe, you know, that dropped that probe, fl flew back by and picked up the ice crystals. <clears throat> there's the headline, India's first lunar mission finds water on the moon. But when Buzz Aldrin came on the show... He goes, we need to land a probe on Mars's one moon, and there you'll find the monolith. And it was probably put there by an advanced intelligence. And that's all I can tell you. Then off air, I'm like, come on, talk more about it. He goes, no, 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 that's all I can say. That's all I can say. And then I have this, this conversation at Charlie Sheen's house with him. And I mean, it's Buzz Aldrin, folks. A guy that punches people out that says he didn't go to the moon. And, and of course, I knew Raymond Teague. He died, I guess it was earlier this year, late last year. What a sweetheart he was. You know, he was on the main Mars mission. I mean, main um, moon missions, ran the RCA cameras on the moon, ran the Skylab cameras, the space shuttle cameras. I mean, he was mission one command. He said, no, we were there. But then he said, I can't tell you the other stuff. It's just you're dead on. It's more advanced. So basically, they've got Tinker Toy missions that they show you piggybacked with real missions on top of it. And that's what Dr. Bob Bowman, who died about a year ago, nuclear physicist, uh, fighter bomber pilot, Vietnam, just another amazing individual. That's exactly what he said. But uh, the monolith, and again, I, didn't mean, I don't know why I went off of this with all this important news today. It's just that I see the story up on DrudgeReport.com. It's also up on Infowars.com. NASA humans will prove we are not alone in the universe within 20 years. Well, whether it's a blue beam psyop or whatever it is, I mean, maybe it isn't true. Maybe it's a psyop. You know, Ronald Reagan, the Pope, they've all been saying, you know, outside aliens will unify us and the rest of it. Kissinger said that for world government. They have UN studies about it. Uh, Lennon LaRouge wanted to put a space based system up in the 70s to unify the world around asteroid and comet uh, repulsion or shoot downs and thought that was a way to bring the planet together. And that was picked up by the CIA, that plan in the early 70s. That's in the Washington Post, by the way. That's not LaRouge saying that. And it was actually the cover then to put up space planes with uh, a global decapitation system to decapitate state leaders in one hour was the plan back in 79 with over 100 of these space planes with DU Sabo, Sabo, de uh, decapitator weapons. Again, they can shoot, let's say your base is two miles under a mountain, because you can't be two miles under sea level because it gets, you know, 150 degrees down there. You got to be under a mountain that's a couple miles high, and then it's 65 degrees. Don't need air conditioning, don't need heating. And they could shoot two, three miles right into a mountain with the stuff they had in the 70s. Right through granite with a DU weapon. But there's so much kinetic force that it creates a multi-megaton explosion. And then they throw it in your face with movies like Last Starfighter, where the aliens come in with the meteor guns. And how they're recruiting people with the video games. Turned out that was a Pentagon plan in the 60s. I mean, let me just say this. You're living in Buck Rogers. The public hadn't been told, okay?
Th that, that's all I'm telling you. Just what I know is off the charts. But there's huge classified space program. We'll be right back. Stay with us. There's one major fact. Uh, just go through some of the headlines here so you know what's coming up. But uh, Staff Sergeant retired Joe Biggs is going to be in studio giving us his take on Bo Bergdahl, supposedly held for years by the Taliban Al-Qaeda. And we said it looked like a staged exfiltration, probably with an Al-Qaeda cell controlled by the West. It's just like ISIS is, because we've seen this before, being released. And we said he'll just be basically put back on the general public if that's the case. They'll have some new distraction about will he be tried for murder or you know, aiding and uh, abetting uh, enemy combatants or whatever. I don't think so. This was done to cover up the VA scandal, but we'll get Joe Biggs' take on that. But what's really important coming up is uh, Joe has all these incredible videos and photos of uh, stuff he did in Afghanistan and Iraq that's never before been seen. And I said, man, you got to put this out on air. I know Esquire wrote some articles about it. But you really need to release some of this. So he said, well, what do you think I ought to release? And I said, well, this van full of plastic explosives with U.S. passports and how they were going to come basically bomb the U.S. You know, the fact that there were real terrorists, we'd like to know about that. So you're going to see photos of that if you're a TV viewer, radio listener, you'll hear about it. And then by tonight, it'll be on the nightly news, the video, and then posted for everybody by tomorrow with an article at Infowars.com. But Joe is going to start making contact with all these military people that are already sending us videos, photos. He'll be vetting it and bringing out a lot of this battlefield footage and photos that never see the light of day, both from the past and currently. And he's helping us go through all of that. So that'll certainly freak out the Pentagon. But that is coming up in the next segment. Real news, real journalism. That's what we do. Just like we went down and Border Patrol says that the illegals are being let in, that they're bringing them deeper into the country. We talk to our source. They tell us where to go. There are the buses pulling up. On the Mexican side, they get on U.S. buses. The Border Patrol gives them money. And the illegals are bus deeper in. That was four weeks ago. Now national news. <clears throat> That's what we do. And, and, and we just go where the news takes us. We don't go get a news story and then say, well, we don't agree with this politically, so we're going to cover it up. We just put it out there. And let the chips fall where they may. Because this is bigger than just the listeners or bigger than myself. It's about the truth. And it's about that journey and that discovery of what really is true. Knowing yourself, knowing others. And what are the secrets of the universe? And what's really going on? Because in the battle against the globalist tyrants, it's going to be reality. Not, not illusion, not delusion, not propaganda that is going to save this country and this world in our minds. <clears throat> we are trapped in a type of purgatory. I, I woke up about 4 a.m. this morning, and I just thought, you know, the earth is purgatory. It's, it's, it's where you're tested. It's where the decision is made by you about which side you're going to choose to be on. And all of us have our struggles every day with evil. But what matters is, is which way your heart turns. Like David, a man after God's own heart, did a lot of terrible things, but truly repented and truly was taken over by his flesh and had courage. So I'll tell you this, folks, God hates a coward. And the universe hates a coward. Whatever you want to call it. Now, coming up, Dick Cheney, this is rich, says Obama has exceeded constitutional authority by use of executive power. He's the guy that argued that even the vice president had unlimited power. But you know it's getting bad when Dick Cheney, that is the pot calling the kettle black. I'll probably have CNN said that was a racist statement. It wasn't. It's an old saying like, you know, watch pots never boil or it's what's another word of being a total hypocrite. That's, that's ridiculous. Fox We're guarding the, the henhouse. The